Good morning. My name is Mike Collins. I'm the mayor here in town. And as you can see in the background, we're at uh, Settlers Park, which is just adjacent to our village hall. Uh, we're under the Richard Rock Amphitheater. And we just want a couple minutes just to uh, welcome you to town as always. Uh, I want you to make sure about the safe di distancing. And I also want to make sure that as of today, which is May 1, that we wear these masks when we're out in public. Uh, you don't have to wear them in your house, you don't have to wear them in your car, but you certainly have to wear them when you're outside. Uh, with me today is uh, Alan Persons, our Public Works Director, and Brian Frostrom, who is one of our uh, team leaders. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to have to ha have uh, Brian speak this morning about the uh, agriculture's uh, treating for the gypsy moth. So, Brian? The gypsy moth is an invasive species that feeds on a variety of trees and shrubs, including oaks, willows, birches, and spruces. It can eventually kill the trees via repeated defoliation. The Department of Agriculture intends to treat 300 plus acres in Plainfield to help eradicate this invasive species. Areas to be sprayed include Settlers Park, Mather Woods, the riverfront, a portion of River Road, Wallen Woods, and a portion of Indian Oaks. The treatment will consist of two aerial applications of the pesticide BTK. After the initial treatment, a second spraying session will take place approximately seven days later. All of the spraying is done by helicopter. Spraying will take place in May. The exact date will be dependent on a number of factors, including weather conditions and temperature. At this time, it is estimated that the spraying will begin sometime between May 10th and May 15th. The Department of Agriculture has a Facebook page with updates on the spraying. I want to thank Brian for his presentation about the gypsy moth. And now we're going to have uh, Mr. Persons talk, and he's going to speak about the pathways here uh, at Settlers Park. I just want to say, though, just remember that the playgrounds are closed during this epidemic. So, uh, Mr. Persons. All right, thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate that. The, uh, the park, I, I just want to let everyone know that the park throughout this entire um, uh, situation that we're all going through and all, in, all experiencing is going to remain open. And the playground equipment may be closed, but the park will remain open. This is a very popular park within the community. Many, many people enjoy the park here, and we get a lot of positive feedback about how nice this uh, park is within the village, Settlers Park is within the village. Um, this summer, we will be completing some pathway improvements, some patching and resurfacing improvements along the pathway. Um, we'll also be completing some landscaping improvements out here. So you're gonna see some landscaping improvements that are gonna be completed as a continuing effort to improve this uh, beautiful amenity that the village currently has. So I welcome everyone, as the weather gets warmer, come outside, enjoy Settlers Park, and enjoy the outdoors. Today we are uh, on tour. Uh, we're here at Settlers Park, but we're actually gonna be crossing uh, the river to the other side of our community, and we're gonna stop in the Village Green and check on the construction that's going on within the Village Green neighborhood. Okay, as you can see, we've moved locations. It's a little different backdrop than we had this about an hour ago. Uh, what, what it is, is this is the Village Green, and this is a culmination of a three-year project, and we're gonna pan the area when we get done with this, just so you can see how it is, but I'll turn this presentation over to Alan now. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, for the benefit of the public out here, as the Mayor has said, this is a three-year a project that the village has undertaken. The Village Green is one of the oldest neighborhoods within the community. Most of the homes here are over 100 years old. And this is really where the water and the wastewater system started. So over 120 years ago, the village started the water system, uh, had a contractor install the water system, and started the wastewater system too as well. What we're, I'm gonna show you a couple of items over here um, that just kind of indicate uh, the type of material that we've been using and what has been done here too as well. In 2018, uh, since this area is filled with old clay, clay tile for sanitary sewer, we had a contractor come in, 
and actually install this plastic fiberglass material inside all of the sanitary sewers. Um, when they installed this, they actually inserted it. It was uh, flexible at that time, and they heated this material up, pressurized it, and then um, it's actually stronger than brand new plastic pipe. So that was the first phase. All of the sewer lines, including the services, uh, this type of material had been installed to uh, reinforce that. The next phase of the project actually included the replacement of the water mains. And you can see this is a four inch water main that was installed in this area 120 years ago. This was the largest water main that was installed in this area at that time over 120 years ago. And you can see how small that is and you can see the buildup of rust on the inside of the four inch water main here too as well. The other thing that was replaced as part of the project are these lead service lines. And You've heard about this in the news quite a bit. You know, of course, lead is not good for people, but over 100 years ago, lead service lines, that was the only uh, material that they had to use. Now, inside the lead, you can see it's pretty constricted. It's only about a half inch. On the outside of the lead service line, there's lead, a brass shutoff valve, and then old uh, iron pipe here on the other end to connect it together. As part of this project, we had eliminated a hundred of these services, so all of the old lead services were removed as part of this project and new copper lines were installed. To give you an idea uh, as far as size wise, um, this is the size of the new water main. The smallest water main that we put in is an eight inch. Uh, we also put 10 and 12 inch water main in as well. And then all of the new service lines are copper service lines and they're one inch service lines. So compared to that old lead service line, uh, this is what was installed, so it's a lot, lot safer. The last phase of this project that you hear all the noise going on behind me uh, is, a, is all about is reconstructing all of the roadways. So all of the roadways will get new curb, uh, will get new asphalt, will have new decorative street lighting, new sidewalks that are ADA compliant too as well, concrete sidewalks, and some landscaping out here too as well. We expect to have the entire project completed by the end of this October. And we are really excited about this three-year program. We're glad that it's uh, coming to the end, and it's a huge benefit to the entire community, not only the residents right here within the Village Green neighborhood.